everyone, welcome back to the studio. As promised, I said we'd start working on the 319W by Singer. And so we're going to do that today. We're going to start on some of the projects that are going to be required for rebuilding this thing. We're going to rebuild the cabinet, we're going to redo the machine, get it up and running, and hopefully use it for future projects. So, let's get started. So the first thing with the cabinet is the drawers. And they're all relatively in great shape. I don't see any major issues with any of them. What we will be doing is refinishing the faces of them. And yes, they all have faces. You can really see it on this one. <laughs> so, the handle system is a three-part handle. It has the two nubs here that hold in the bar. And the little smiley face is caused by the bar over years being knocked against it. And it is pretty grouped. So we're going to go ahead and take all these down. Yes, I thought about keeping the smiley faces, but with the handles back on it, you're not going to see it anyways. They are cute though. So we're going to be sanding all these down, refinishing them, lacquering them, the whole nine yards. One of the things that I do have to get is some more of the handle pieces. So this is the handle system. Goes in like that. And like that. Now unfortunately I'm missing one of those and three of those. <laughs> So I'll be digging around and looking for some online or in some junk stores, secondhand stores around here. It's a very standard style for that time period, so I should be able to find them. And in the meantime, I will get these cleaned up to make sure that each one of them actually cleans up nicely. Uh, they are brass underneath, and yes, they are patinaed with age and everything, but they are very, very dirty. It is rather disgusting. So we'll be scrubbing those down and getting them cleaned up. Alright, now as far as the machine, let's dig into that real quick. Alright, so this is the Singer 319W. W is, stands for where it was made, which plant it was made in. These machines were built between 1954 and 1964. Unfortunately, there is no breakdown for the serial numbers for these specific singers. I do know that this is in the the serial number is in the latter part of the series, so it was built probably in the early 60s. So they are a little bit of a basic heavy duty kind of machine. Um, most of the features are the same. It does have a single needle. You have a tension adjuster here. Threads up and through here and everything. Nice little carrying handle. Over here you have your width gauge. And this one, the really neat thing about this is you can actually set two different width styles. So it does do zigzag and everything. This is not just a straight stitch machine. And I'll show you that in a little bit. On this side, this is the bobbin winder. These are little cams and they can be taken off and changed out. And I do have an entire box of different ones and this changes the different stitches. So there is a little metal tab up here. And when the machine is running, this turns and it dips it up and down depending on the stitch style. This one here does that stitch, which is kind of like a zigzag. And like I said, there's a whole case of them. The 
The other thing that this machine does have on the top here is different little toggles and they also give you a variety of different stitches. And from what I read in the book, you can actually lift up like two different ones and get another type of stitch. And of course, this is where your thread goes. Um, like I said, it is seized up. So we'll go ahead and dig into this and see what we can do. Normally when you turn the spindle on this side, this is going to go up and down. I can see it trying to move, but it is not. The belt is attached, it is working. The belt is in bad shape, so I did pick up a new one. But when we're ready for that, I do not want to plug it in just yet, not until I get inside of it and get it unseized. Let's go ahead and get started and see what we can find out on this thing. Alright. So this plate is held on by a few screws. This one is held on by this bolt and it comes off just like that. So I can see everything moving up until here. Let's see if we can get in here for you. So it looks to be seized up right here. So we'll get some oil on that and see if we can't get it moving up and down again. This is just lubricating sewing machine oil. We're going to try that first. Unfortunately, the needle is down inside, so let's go ahead and take that off. See if that'll get it to lift. Nope, it's definitely in there. When all else fails, go at it from another angle, right? A little history on this it set in a garage for several years a few years don't know how many exactly down in Arizona so the good thing is there's no rust We're going to let that sit in and see what we can do after this. Okay. That's pretty seized on too. So, give a little bit of love. There we go. No rust, just old oil and grease. 
I'll walk this thing off. There we go. So apparently this is the blanket stitch that was on it. <laughs> All right. And this seems to be seized up as well. So we're going to get some oil down inside of this. So how this works is when this turns, there's a gear which makes this turn, which follows these teeth with this thing when this is engaged, like that. And it follows these. And that seems to not be moving at all up in there either. This over here is moving better with the needle so that's a good thing so we'll let the oil soak in starting to get a little bit of movement and clay so we'll let this sit for a while and in the meantime we'll work on the drawers And there's the first one sanded down, nice and smooth. The old stain and lacquer came off super quick and super easy. And so that was the before and the after. And as far as the stain, that is what I will be using. It is a red mahogany. So it will help bring it closer to the natural color of what this was, because it does have a lot of red undertones in it. But so there you have it. I have a whole bunch more to do. And it's a little cold outside, so I'll be waiting for a couple days before I get going more on those. And then in the next video, we'll, I'll show you what they look like finished. So what else do I have going on? Well, I am going to be making up some resin starting a new project today. I did pick up a new resin, uh, a new silicone mixing cup. This one goes up to eight ounces. So I'll be using that today. And here's all my different colors. Just don't know what color I'm going to work with. Thinking one of my new ones, which is that. It's really pretty. So we'll see. I'm going to mix that with a few other different colors. If you have any suggestions on what colors you'd like to see, please leave a comment below. Let me know. What do you want mixed together? We'll see what we can do. Uh, let's see, what is this? This is Thermo. Oop, it's already starting. So right now it's blue. And then it turns to like a green with heat. So we'll be playing with that here sometime soon. This one is glow in the dark pigment. This is actually glow powder from Art and Glow. I have this going on as far as a painting and a wood burning. You'll see that sometime in the future when I get it done. Alright, over here at the cutting table I'm already starting on Valentine's stuff. So this is cut out and ready to be sewn up. Next up is polka dot chickens because why not? Polka dot chickens. It's cool. <laughs> and 
and over here at the sewing machine I have these cut out and ready to go these will be Valentine's Mud Cozy gifts so that will be fun there you have it first year of the YouTube channel is done and I've learned quite a bit I'm still finding my footing and what direction I want to take with the channel itself um, I do a lot of different things as you can see this year is going to be no different uh, the one thing that you will see a lot of is that sewing machine the 319W and getting it up and running I also have a Singer Featherweight and another Singer sewing machine that I will be introducing to you as well um, I did have one of my heavy duty Singers die on me unfortunately they're not made for commercial use they are a home use machine and they are really good for home use if you're going to do denim if you're going to do quilting that sort of things a lot of layers you know thick layers and everything they work really good but to put them through the abuse that I do they don't hold up very well even with maintenance and everything like that so I did have to say goodbye to one of them that was a very sad day when I dropped it off into the garbage <laughs> I did take a lot of pieces off of it because I do have a few other singer heavy duties maybe one of these videos I'll show you all of my sewing machines lined up but in doing so I broke down and I bought another machine and it should be in here sometime in a week or so and trust me you'll get a little peek on that one see it up and running see it working and that will be my main hopefully my main machine after that I still have my fancy stitch machine I still have the embroidery machine I have my two very old ones that do work they do just need to be their yearly cleanup and lubed up and stuff so we'll be going through that um, and soon hopefully I'll have the 319 up and running which will be fun I don't want to put those ones through a lot of abuse because they are older but yeah so a lot more resin this year a little bit more painting some more sewing more patterns um, unique different things whatever I think of whatever I want to work on so a lot of different things for this channel so thank you for joining me last year I hope you enjoyed it if you're watching this and you're brand new to the channel thank you for joining this year and I'll see you in the next video bye